In today's episode, I'm gonna finish my testing of Bluetti's AC70 lithium power bank. I've found a major flaw, and it's not just with this unit, it's with a lot of Bluetti's range, so stay tuned. Hey guys, I'm Daryl and welcome to the channel. Now, today, we're gonna to wrap up my review on Bluetti's AC70 lithium power bank. I've been using it a fair bit in a lot of different situations. I took it away last weekend, we stayed in an Airbnb. I've found an issue with it though, um, that we'll chat about a little bit later on, uh, with regards to my solar feed. And in the last episode, I said I couldn't get my solar blanket to work. I have now got it to work. It's not a fault with the unit. It's a fault with uh, the cabling that Blue Eddy supply. And it's not just with this unit. It's with, I presume, all of Blue Eddy's range. But as I said, we'll have a chat about that later on. The real positives about Blue Eddy's AC70 lithium power bank is its portability, its size, its weight, and the fact that you can recharge a whole multitude of items off it in one go. Um, and if you're using it for that, I'd say it's exceptionally good at doing it. As I said, I've been using it now for a bit over a month since the last video came out, and um, I'm actually a bit of a fan of it. It doesn't do much wrong, and the only things it does wrong is that if you overload the actual unit itself. And if you do overload it, it'll just stop outputting current, you turn it off, turn it back on again, and you're right to go again. But as I said, just to be able to throw this thing in the back of the car, wherever you're going, you can just take it out, plonk it on a table, which is what I did when we went away the other weekend in an Airbnb. Um, I could charge uh, my own laptop, my partner's laptop, um, camera batteries, phones, her phone and my phone, you know, drone batteries, uh, what else was there, GoPro batteries, and you can get most of them happening at the one time. And if you're doing that sort of work with this type of unit, this unit will last you weeks on end on a single charge. So exceptionally good there. Um, and it's probably what this unit is meant to do. If you're powering 12 volt lights or the like, this thing will just eat it up. It just won't be a concern for it. So let's look at the negative aspects of this um, that I've found in, in the last month. The other night I tried to cook a steak, and it was a nice piece of steak, on a uh, cast iron griddle that was sitting on an invert, my portable inverter hot plate. Luckily, my inverter hot plate has uh, nine uh, power settings. It would work on power setting five, which is 1100 watts. It would work continuously on that. If I bumped it up to six, which is 1300 watts, it, wouldn't, it would run for a little while and then just shut it down because it was overloading the inverter. The power use though was substantial for this small unit. I cooked one steak and it was still a little bit too blue for me. It was a nice piece of steak. It was probably, you know, two centimeters or two and a half centimeters in thickness. It used 40% of the battery. Uh, and I only had it charged to 45% and at 5% it was like, yep, that's enough. I'm not running it any lower than this. This thing was a champ. It just powered it. But as I said, at 1100 watts, which was level five on the induction hot plate, it would work as long as it could. At level six, it's 1300 watts. It would work for a small time and then shut off. It was just too much for it. But, um, you know, to use, I'd say, half of the battery pack just to cook one steak. And it's probably more than what this unit was designed for. However, if you're cooking something like, uh, I don't know, seafood or fish that doesn't take that long to cook, probably okay. You'd probably get away with it. But it is touch and go with this type and size of unit. In the camper with 300 watts of lithium power, I have no problems whatsoever with an inverter hot plate, but I've got so much power here to play with, it's not funny. Whereas this, it's what, 
60 watts or something like that or 50 watts so it's it's substantially smaller however to give it credit it did most of what i required but again you would have done that and it's like oh now i have to recharge it somehow to continue using it but the thing that has irked me more than anything not so much with this unit but with uh, how Bluetti supplies these units and want to keep you in their ecosystem is that if you remember on the last video I said that I couldn't get my solar blanket to work and I've got a, a three or four hundred watt iTech world solar blanket I bought another cable that had an Anderson plug on one end and your solar connectors on the other to connect to this bespoke cable that um, Blue Weddy supply. And the reason I did that for is this cable that Blue Weddy supplies has a bespoke connector on the end of it that goes into the Blue Weddy unit. So you really need to use this. What I've found, oh, after the solar panel not working, I thought I'll just drag it out onto the front yard one day and see what is going on with this thing. And I was going through all the wiring uh, that came out of the solar panel. I was going through the wiring of the cable that I bought. And um, it turns out the wiring on Bluetti's cable that goes into the unit is uh, the polarities crossed over. So all I can presume is that Bluetti want to keep you in their ecosystem. And I dare say that if you connect this up to Bluetti's solar panels, they will work superbly. However, if you connect it up to a third party cable, like I was trying to do, and connect it to an off the shelf uh, generic solar panel, it won't work. And it's because in this cable, the polarity is reversed. Now, I did think at one point maybe <laughs> maybe i've got a dud cable so because it was a weekend i joined a bluetti facebook users group and there was a sticky post there and it was how to uh, change over the polarity on an anderson plug so you could use a third party uh, solar panel my problem with that is this is the third party cable that they're suggesting I change over the polarity on the Anderson plug I would then have to put that aside and say well that's just for the Bluetti unit but at the end of the day for me it was just better to switch over the polarity of the offending cable and then I can connect any off the shelf cable slash solar panel to the unit and the unit will work as it should um, and, and once I did that and connected the solar panel to it off it went and as i said it was like at 178 watts or something it was pulling into the unit which was really really good and at that point of time i can't remember how much charge i had in it um, but it said it would take about three hours to recharge the unit it really irks me when companies do this sort of stuff and try to keep you within their ecosystem i can understand why they may want to from a commercial side of it but for the end user if you were to just buy one of these, you'd originally look at it and go, oh, there's something wrong with my other equipment or it's not suitable for this unit. Whereas like, it is quite suitable and they've just switched the polarity over. So yep, traps for the unwary. But that concludes my reviews of Bluetti's AC70 power bank. As I said, very impressed with the unit itself. Not so impressed with Blue Eddy's solar cabling and their switching polarity on it. But if you're using this unit within what it's meant for, and for me that's recharging, uh, you know, any of your electrical devices, or you're running things like a fridge and you're just a weekend warrior, uh, very, very suitable for what you're using. If you, you're thinking you'll buy this and you'll be able to stretch it out to do other things like you know, running induction hot plates. It will run them if you're uh, within, if you're under say a thousand watts or less and your cooking times are very quick. So if you're doing seafood or, or fish, as I said, probably you'd get away with it. But anyway, that's enough for today. Hope you enjoyed that guys and we'll see you next time. Bye now.